Hi all, in this video we will look at a practical example of quadratic equation to get a better understanding of how this can be used in real life. Let's say we have a boy who is throwing a ball in the air. Now the path that the ball follows is in the form of a projectile motion and the trajectory resembles a parabola. Let's say the boy throws the ball with an initial velocity of 15 meter per second from a height of 1 meter. This 1 meter is the height of the boy's arm from the ground. What if we want to know the time it takes the ball to reach the ground? Now how would we calculate this? To calculate this, let's first take a look at what we know. In this scenario, we will take ground as our reference and everything will be measured from the ground. So let's say what we have. Let's call A the initial position of the ball when the ball was in the boy's hand. Let's call C the final position of the ball when the ball touches the ground. We know that the boy's arm is 1 meter from the ground. We know that the initial velocity is 15 meter per second. The path that the ball follows is in the form of parabola. And we know that somewhere along this parabola or along this trajectory, the ball will reach its maximum height. Let's call that maximum height peak of the trajectory. Let's use B to denote the peak position of the ball or the maximum height or the position at which the ball reaches its maximum height. We also know that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square. We do not know the final velocity of the ball just before it touches the ground. Now to find the time taken for the ball to hit the ground, we would first have to derive the quadratic equation for the projectile motion. So let's do that. Let's S denote the displacement of the ball from the ground at any given time. Remember we are taking ground as our reference. And because displacement is the shortest and direct distance between the two points, when we talk about displacement of the ball from the ground, the shortest distance is actually the vertical distance between the ball and the ground. It's not the path that the ball follows when thrown in the air. It is the vertical distance between the ball and the ground. And we know from our physics is that uh, displacement is average velocity multiplied by change in time. And average velocity is initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2. Now we know what the initial velocity is. We don't know what the final velocity is, so we would have to calculate the final velocity. But we do know that the final velocity is initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by change in time. And we know this from our physics lesson. In this case, because the ball is thrown in the air, acceleration will be acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meter per second. But because we are taking ground as a reference, which means that acceleration due to gravity is acting downwards. So anything that acts downwards, we will denote it as negative. So acceleration due to gravity in this case will be negative. So what we can do now is we can start inserting the value of average velocity in the displacement equation. So S is equal to average velocity multiplied by change in time. When we replace average velocity with Vi plus Vf divided by 2, S becomes Vi plus Vf divided by 2 multiplied by change in time. And we know that Vf is equal to Vi plus acceleration due to gravity multiplied by change in time. We replace Vf with that. So the equation becomes S is equal to Vi plus Vi plus acceleration multiplied by change in time divided by 2 within brackets and then multiplied by change in time. We simplify the equation. The equation becomes S is equal to 2Vi over 2 plus acceleration multiplied by change in time divided by 2 within brackets and then multiplied with change in time. 2 and 2 cancels out. So S becomes Vi plus acceleration multiplied by change in time divided by 2 within brackets multiplied by change in time. Simplifying it further, we open the brackets and S becomes Vi multiplied by change in time plus acceleration multiplied by change in time squared divided by 2. 
And now we know that the initial displacement of the ball from the ground was 1 meter. So we add that 1 meter into this equation. So our equation for the displacement of the ball from the ground becomes S is equal to VI multiplied by change in time plus acceleration multiplied by change in time squared divided by 2 plus 1. So think about it. When the ball is in the boy's hand, it is not in motion. It is 1 meter above the ground. There is no velocity because the ball has not been thrown and there is also no acceleration. So A will be 0. So if we replace initial velocity with 0, acceleration with 0, then we can see that S is equal to 1 meter. And this is a quick mathematical check to see when the ball is in the boy's hand. And to write it in the form of a general equation, we can replace 1 with H1. H1 denotes any initial height that the ball would have before it is thrown into the air. The displacement of that ball from the ground is 1 meter. So this equation S is equal to initial velocity multiplied by change in time plus acceleration multiplied by change in time squared divided by 2 plus H1 is the general form of relationship between displacement of the ball from the ground and time for the projectile motion. So now we replace initial velocity with 15 meter per second and acceleration with the acceleration due to gravity with a negative sign and h1 with 1 meter and we try to solve this equation. So s becomes 15 multiplied by change in time plus within brackets minus 9.8 multiplied by change in time squared divided by 2 plus 1. And we simplify it, the equation becomes 15 delta t minus 5 delta t squared plus 1. 5 is because we have divided 9.8 by 2 and we have rounded it up to 5. For the sake of simplicity, we replace delta t with t. And the equation becomes 15t minus 5t squared plus 1. We rearrange the equation so that the term t squared is at the start of the equation. And the equation becomes s is equal to minus 5t squared plus 15t plus 1. Now this equation is a quadratic equation because you can see the exponent of the first term is 2. Now we know that the height of the ball when it touches the ground is 0 because the ball is actually on the ground. So the displacement of the ball from the ground will be 0. So we know that the height of the ball when it touches the ground will be 0. This is because the displacement of the ball from the ground at the time it touches the ground will be 0. So we replace s with 0 in the equation and the equation becomes minus 5t squared plus 15t plus 1 is equal to 0. Now this is a quadratic equation. And we can solve this quadratic equation using quadratic formula to find the time at which the ball hits the ground. So let's try to do that. We know that the quadratic formula gives us two values of the variable x, which in this case will be the variable t. And these are the two values. And to find these two values, we need to know what A is, what B is, and what C is. So A in this case is minus 5, B is 15, and C is 1. So we use these values to find the first value of T. So T becomes minus 15 plus square root of 15 square minus 4 multiplied by minus 5 multiplied by 1 divided by 2 multiplied by minus 5. We solve this equation and we get the value of t as minus 0 0.0652 and the unit of t will be seconds. So it's minus 0 0.0652 seconds. Now we know that the time cannot be negative because we are not going to go back in time. So we will have to find the second value of t. And that second value of t will be the time the ball takes to reach the ground. So we use the second solution for the quadratic equation and replace uh, a, b, c with their values. We simplify the equations and we get time is equal to 3.065 seconds. Now this is the time the ball takes to reach the ground when thrown by the boy. So this is one of the practical application of quadratic equation in a real life scenario. Now, what if we want to find the time at which the ball reaches the peak of its trajectory? 
meaning its maximum height. We can also find this using the quadratic equation that we have derived. We know that the peak or apex of a parabola is minus b over 2a. We replace b and a in this equation and we solve it and we get peak or apex of the parabola as 1.5. And this 1.5 will have units of seconds. This means the time taken for the ball to reach the peak is 1.5 seconds. And what if we want to find out the maximum height of the ball? We can also find that using the quadratic equation that we have developed. Now we know that the time it takes the ball to reach the maximum height is 1.5 seconds. We can replace t with 1.5 seconds in the quadratic equation that we derive for the displacement. And this will allow us to calculate the displacement or the maximum height of the ball from the ground. So let's do that. S becomes minus 5 into 1.5 square plus 15 into 1.5 plus 1. We solve it and we get the value of S as 12.25 meter. This means that the maximum height of the ball above the ground is 12.25 meter. So now you see that we have used the quadratic equation to calculate different properties of the trajectory of the ball thrown in the air. This is one of the practical examples of the quadratic equation. There are several other practical examples of the quadratic equation, but in this video, we will only concentrate on the projectile motion. And to get a visual understanding of the trajectory of the ball thrown in the air or the projectile motion, I think it's important to plot a graph of the trajectory of the ball. So let's do that. Let's use our initial equation, which is S is equal to minus 5t squared plus 15t plus 1. So to plot a graph, we will use different values of time to calculate displacement and final velocity. And we will plot two graphs. One graph will be between displacement and the time, and the second graph will be between time and final velocity. So let's first plot the first graph between displacement and time. So at time is equal to zero, displacement will be one. If we replace t with zero in the equation, we get s is equal to minus five multiplied by zero plus 15 multiplied by zero plus one. So s is equal to one. And this is what we see in the graph over here, the first point in our graph. And then we progressively increase the value of time and keep calculating the displacement and keep plotting the graph. At time is equal to 0.1 second, the displacement is 2.45 meters. And at time is equal to 0.2 second, the displacement is 3.8 meter. As you can see from the graph, we've got three points. Using this way, we progressively increase the value of time till we get to the time at which the ball reaches the ground, which was 3.065 seconds. And we keep on calculating corresponding values of displacement. And this is what you see over here. We've calculated values of displacement against different values of time. At 3.06 second, the displacement is zero, as you can see from the table. And you can also see it from the graph over here. And any value of time greater than 3.06 seconds will give a negative value of the displacement. That is just the property of the quadratic equation. Once the value of displacement passes zero, any value of time greater than the time at which the displacement is zero will give displacement as negative. And we can also see that at 1.5 seconds, the maximum height is 12.25 meter. So plotting a graph between displacement and time is a really good way to understand the trajectory of the ball and understand different properties of the projectile motion. One thing to remember is that at every point along this trajectory, acceleration due to gravity is acting downwards. It is acting downwards at this point, at this point, at the peak of the trajectory or at the maximum height, the acceleration due to gravity is acting downward. Along every point of this trajectory, acceleration due to gravity is acting downward. So just remember that. Now what we do is we plot a graph between time and final velocity of the ball just to get an understanding of how the final velocity of the ball changes. So we use the equation final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time. By inserting the value of initial velocity and acceleration due to gravity, we get final velocity is equal to 15 minus 9.8 multiplied by time. We use different values of time 
to get corresponding values of final velocity. And we can see that final velocity is constantly decreasing. And we know that at 3.06 seconds, the ball touches the ground and the final velocity just before that time will be approximately minus 15 meters per second. So we started with the final velocity of 15 meter per second at time is equal to zero and we reached minus 15 meter per second. So just remember that the final velocity will keep on decreasing. Now from our discussion of our projectile motion, we can note a few things. It's important to know what your sign convention is. According to our sign convention, anything acting in the upward direction is positive and anything acting in the downward direction is negative. And acceleration due to gravity is acting in the downward direction, which is why it's negative. Another thing to note is that displacement is the shortest and direct distance between two points. Displacement is not the curved path that the ball follows. It's actually the shortest and direct distance between the two points, which in this case is the distance between the ball and the ground. Another thing to remember is that acceleration due to gravity is always negative because of our sign convention. The final velocity will change throughout the motion of the ball. It will not remain constant. And why will it not remain constant? This is because acceleration due to gravity. Because the acceleration due to gravity is present at every point along the trajectory of the ball, the final velocity will keep on changing. Final velocity at the peak is zero, but acceleration due to gravity at the peak is not zero. It is minus 9.8 meter per second square. This is because the ball is still in motion at the peak of its trajectory. And the final velocity just before the ball hits the ground is not zero. Final velocity will have some value just before the ball hits the ground. I hope this has been useful. Tune in soon for another video. See you.